Hey guys, happy holidays, and thank you for joining me on this ride as we officially announce our interview series, and the name is Currently. Why Currently? It's all about being current, it's all about using your instincts, and it's all about passion. And I'm so excited because we're bringing together the best locals in South Florida. And today, specifically, we're here for the last interview of the year with Joshua Miller, CEO of CNI Studios and Nextdoor. We're going to dig in deep and learn why he chose Fort Lauderdale. And again, thank you for joining me on the journey. We have an incredible year planned ahead. Let's go inside. So this is the first interview since we have officially launched currently, and I couldn't be more excited to be here with you, Josh. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm pumped for currently and pumped for you. Thank you. Got it. And you know, as I look around here, you know, I just laugh because we've had conversations about this place and what it means to you and how you don't even need to advertise it. There's sure. something about the lure, people finding it on their own or being introduced by someone else, yeah. right? Yeah, I think we just wanted to build a place that felt magical and felt special. Felt like you weren't in Fort Lauderdale. And so when you come in, you walk down the hallway, you see these amazing books, you push open the secret bookshelf door and you have another Narnia world kind of revealed yeah. to you. Uh, you know, we wanted to build something that made people feel something magical. So tell me what CNI Studios, what, what it is and what it means to you. Uh, so I think traditionally CNI Studios is an advertising agency who also produces original content and really connects with the community. So we work with a lot of uh, different brands and organizations and individuals to help get their message out through, I mean, any use of media, whether that be film or video, photography, web, marketing campaigns, we do a lot of that. Um, then also we have a really strong connection to the community. So we're doing, uh, that's why we even have a coffee shop and a bar next door. We want people to come and hang out and experience this and talk to strangers and build relationships. So that's like big for us. Um, we don't need to have that, it's really just a hobby, um, but I think that's a big focus for us. And then also just making original content, making films and uh, uh, photo books and things that we want to produce that kind of is like our passion project. So. And does a lot of it happen here or is yeah. it a mixture? I know you're traveling a yeah. lot. But yeah, I mean this is home base, so Fort Lauderdale became something super special for us. We kind of stumbled upon it, um, but then we've been here for, we've been in this studio since 2000. 10 or something like that so it's been quite a while um, and uh, so we you know there's 46 people that work here so every wow. day we're surrounded with a bunch of different diverse people talking about ideas and strategy uh, and then we also have uh, we started our company in Washington DC so we still have staff members there and in North Carolina and also in Los Angeles and then we have one staff member uh, my bearded friend Brandon Baker who is in London Wow yeah. so okay let's roll back time, right? <laughs> How did you stumble upon Fort Lauderdale? Had you, yeah. what, how did that yeah. happen? I mean, total accident. I was in Washington, D.C., and I was kind of tired and fed up, and we were thinking New York City or Los Angeles, but we kept getting this, we got this job um, with uh, Sun Sports, which is a TV show down here, and filming and editing some of their shows. So I would come down here, work, and go back, and do it again and do it again and do it again and then finally my partners were like maybe we should do something in Fort Lauderdale. We came down to Fort Lauderdale and we felt like man we can really create something special here and the town seems so you know if you have a New Yorker in LA yeah they're really big towns but they're established they're done. Right. Fort Lauderdale felt like Legos like you could right. just build whatever you wanted to build. You saw that vision. Yeah and so we did that. Uh, the so, community responded. So when you came here let's, let's close our eyes for a moment. <laughs> Tell me okay how was Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. When you first arrived, then versus now. Man, I think Fort Lauderdale when we first came in 2008 was, uh, man, I don't want to talk bad about my city, but no, I think. It's not it, bad. But I think it's it's important for people to know. Yeah, I, I think it was just super know. like limited and like unavailable and one sided. When I came here, it was like Los Olas, right, and Second Street, <laughs> and. And I, we, we struggled the first couple of years because I did not enjoy Fort Lauderdale. I just came from Washington, D.C., full of culture, full of diversity, and Adams Morgan, and history, and right. buildings that weren't built a year ago, right. you know? And then we came down here, and we're like, so where is it, you know? Right. 
Where's the, where is it? Yeah. And then we realized that there, the thing we were looking for didn't exist. So we had to go build it. Okay. And uh, when we came here, it was horrible. Everyone was like, where are you going to be off of? Off Sistrong? People are getting stabbed or your cars <laughs> right. are getting broken into. And we're like, no, we're building a studio. <laughs> and, uh, and we did. And the funny thing was that the community just was like, yes, we found out very quickly they were very supportive. that we weren't the only people that felt that way. We weren't the only people that was looking for that thing. We had nowhere to go when we first came here. So we had to build the place where we wanted to go. And in turn, there was a lot of other people that felt like that. So they the started. The community was almost like they were. They were like, yeah, it. they were like, finally, oh, <laughs> you know. So uh, that was that was really cool. So so now, as I was pulling up, you know, li living here as a local, sometimes you kind of forget, or you just kind of become immune to all the changes yeah. that are happening. Yeah. So I've noticed, you know, like Henry's next door. Yeah. Like, tell me a little bit about all yeah. the new. Like, I think that are I think up. development is happening. You know, everywhere. So there's a big construction project going on. There's an apartment building on Andrews or something. Mm -hmm. Henry's came in, and uh, after us a while ago, General Provisions came in, and uh, I think that's a good thing. You know, people that are. Uh, I'm glad that people saw C and I as a pioneer mm -hmm. and said like, oh, yeah. you know, when you see somebody else do it, they're like, well, I think I can do it too. Right. You know, right. and uh, someone made that leap. Yeah, and so I feel really good. I feel really, you know. Me and my team, we feel really like accomplished that we did that and we're paved the way for a lot of other people to come here. Now I think big money is able to capitalize on that. So they're saying, hey, there's a bunch of artists here, there's right. community here, there's a coffee shop, there's an art walk, we should put a building here, we should put yeah. this here, we should put this here. So I think it's all developing, it's all, and, and it's great. And so we welcome that because I think, you know, you know, what's New York City with one bar, you know? So, yeah, no, you have so to it's very great, to, it's, it's really cool to see it, the, the whole community start to become like a little city. No, no, absolutely. And I know you have the last Saturday of every month. That's kind of how I, looking back, it's been a couple of years since I've been coming here. Sure. That's what drew me initially was the art walk. Yeah. Here. I think it's funny people that don't know where the art walk is or where Fat Village is. But yeah, I mean, uh, every last Saturday of the month, all the studios on the street, including ours, um, open up. and. Uh, we don't just want to show art, we love doing like really cool experiences. We want to like hang out with people and do something really interactive and showcase art and technology and science in a really cool way. Yeah. Um, not just like, here's a painting on the wall, right. but like, right. can we do something where we jump through that painting? Can we do it with our friends? Um, and so I think we're always trying to one up ourselves every single time. And it's been a long journey for us. It's been, you know, eight years of art walks, you know, so. Wow. Um, uh, we're just, uh, you just have to stay consistent and I think that's been paying off and we get to meet great people like you. No, and I, and I actually really love that because I feel like I, I love, I lived in New York for a short period of time, uh, but I lived in Miami as well and I'm a, definitely a city girl and I love having inspiration. Sure. So when I stumbled upon here, I was so excited. I think there was an interview that you had mentioned, you really wanted to bring strangers together and I love yeah. that because I felt like that was lacking here. Yeah. So before Compass opened our offices off Las Olas, I was coming here for about a year. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> this was my office. I remember that. <laughs> and every day I loved it because I could just walk in and I'd just peek in and you had one advertising agent, you were doing one big project here, you had cameras, photo shoot, and then you yeah. pull up the... I, yeah, website. I feel like it's like almost like a Studio 54 in a way. I You're so connected that. that you you never know. Yeah. We were I'll never forget, we were just like, there's a bunch of people in the coffee shop or something, and we were just hanging out, and The Rock just walked in. <laughs> he was here for a photo shoot with GQ okay. Magazine, and everyone was just like, what in the world? I love that. Um, that stuff is happening here all the time, and we're doing shoots and campaigns and stuff like that, which I think is really cool. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I think uh, uh, I think as it starts to, to build, I think people want to be connected to that type of stuff. And yeah. for us, we want people to like be more open with each other and yeah. say, like, hey, you should meet this person. Yeah. And I think the space makes you feel like you could I'm just talk to somebody yeah. and, not, and not be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so. and it's great too because if you're here for a long period of time, you have the coffee shop, oh, man. happy hour opens, and it's a bar. Absolutely, <laughs> so that's great. Absolutely, and then also like we're working 24/7 <laughs> all the time, so it uh, the 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 beverages help. Yes. <laughs> so I was actually on the website and I saw a lot of Millers. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so I want to talk. 
how, how has it been working with family? Yeah. And then just talk a little bit about the team. Yeah, so family, a lot of people say don't work with family. And I think that's probably true for a lot. Mm-hmm. My family works really well together. You nice. know, my brother runs the company. Nice. And, um, and my younger brother. And uh, he's our general manager and he's incredible. And we have just, our parents just kind of raised us with this like, we don't have that brotherly like uh, arguing or fighting thing. We're right. just like, I just love that kid. We celebrate each other. Love it. And so like yeah. our relationship's super open. And when we wanted a general manager, I couldn't think of anybody that'd be better than him. And uh, so he runs a company and my dad has been the CFO of the, of the brand forever and his wow. wisdom and guidance. He's actually up for CFO of the year. Wow, um, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a finalist, which is really, really cool. Oh, wow. Uh, awesome. For like South Florida Business Journal, so I'm pretty pumped on that. Oh, awesome. um, but yeah, Go I think. Pops. Yeah, so that's been great. And the team in general, I think CNI is hard because people do come and go here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think people think that that is a bad thing. But I think that like turnover can be a really good thing because we want people that really want to be here. And then right. also, like, we want the best talent for our clients right. all the time. And sometimes that may not be this person. Right. Um, or maybe, and so we have found that like the people that are here, I mean, the most creative, innovative, weird, out of the box uh, yeah. thinkers from a super diverse background. We have people from, we've had, uh, you know, people from Haiti that work here, people from Saudi Arabia, wow. and so those yeah. perspectives about a project uh it just that yeah, that's why we do so well especially when you're doing these global campaigns absolutely that you need to target and then also just being inclusive right so like right. just doing campaigns and saying like hey that might not be the right angle here right. we might be isolating a group of people that we may not have thought of Make it a little too small here. right but those people are usually on our team and say hey have you thought about this from the from the point of a, of a woman have you thought of this from the point right. of someone from uh, the middle east you know right. and bringing that to the project for our clients has been like Oh yeah, it makes you look at like photo campaigns differently. Like, are we representing the world Everyone, right? right? Right. Or are we looking really like 1920s? <laughs> <laughs> so travel is definitely a big component. Actually, uh, thank you for meeting with me. I had to schedule an interview in order to get this much time with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, you're traveling. I know you have offices, West Coast, yeah. you know, all over. Yeah. But how has travel been for you? What has that done? It's hard. I think people that say they like travel just haven't traveled a lot. <laughs> um, if you really travel a lot, you just want to jump off a bridge. Uh, so we travel a lot. We don't want you to do that. No, no bridge jumping. No. People that are watching, talk to the therapist. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> uh, but I think. Another time we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, but no, we travel a ton. And um, so we have our office in LA. My business partner's out there uh, a lot, and then so we're just, but we shoot wherever, um, and then we, uh, and then we have our nonprofit. So our nonprofit, you know, we all those organizations are international. So uh, we work with an organization in Guatemala, in Nicaragua, and in Zambia, Africa. Nice. We just signed on another one in India, so we're going there in February. Um, oh, wow, that's why you're going to India. Yeah, that's why I'm going to India, wow. and then we're opening up a New York office in January. So now we. Are gonna be yeah, it's gonna be pretty uh, pretty exciting. So now we're gonna be like a week in Fort Lauderdale, maybe a week in LA, a week in New York, and wow, ending up everywhere. Yeah, so we've been living on uh, a steady diet of like JetBlue <laughs> and Vir- or Alaska. I think bought Virgin, so we've right. been on them a bunch. So you're getting so. your points. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, it's tough. It, the traveling is this year is is outrageously tough. Well, I'm glad you're doing it though, because you're spreading the word. And- yeah, I think it's I think it's really cool. I think it's exciting to be able to see different areas, and especially yeah. for their nonprofit, like seeing different cultures and how those things, uh, what people experience there versus what we experience here, has been eye opening. And then also you see what you're made of out there, like when right. you're traveling and you see like can you can right. you do this? Can you endure it? Right. And so for us, it's been awesome that we've been able to. So. So talking about your nonprofit, see in my reach. Yes. So you officially launched it, I remember, in October, right? So we had an awesome, a huge event called okay. Beyond in October. Beyond, yeah. The, the nonprofit's been open since 2009. Okay. But we just haven't done much okay. with it. Okay. So we hired um, an executive director, okay. finally. To really, you know, and, it off. Yeah, her name's Beth Bryant, so she had came in and really, like, brought it to life, which, nice. has, been, which has been awesome. And I actually, I, w- I wasn't able to make it, but... I, I thought it was such a great way of incorporating technology with yeah. a human touch, which yeah. for me, that's why I love the company I work with. We're about community, but also going with technology yeah. and how yeah. you really can, you know, 
I think I think I think technology can be like a gift and a curse. Right. Um, at our event called Beyond, it was definitely a gift. Like, we wanted people to see and feel what Zambia, Africa felt like, and we couldn't think of a better way to do that than, you know, putting VR, putting the Oculus on, and then you'd be immersed in like this is exactly what it feels like. The sounds and the visual immersed in 360. Um, so we did that. It was like this very cool like. Um, art and tech and and doing good all kind of put together. So and it was just like the complete opposite of these stuffy nonprofit events that we see a lot. So who who came up with that idea? Like what you we did all did. We were there and yeah. we all recorded it. Like, we all did. We were just thinking like, how, what do we do with this great event? And so the team comes together and we have brainstorming sessions and that came out and we got this awesome 360 camera and we took that bad boy around and. Love it produce these really cool videos. It. Yeah, it was really awesome. So where did your sense of community come from? Because I think this is like a common theme yeah. across the board. I think people matter. I think, and I think that's the secret sauce of this company. Mm -hmm. I think amazing thing ha things happen when you get people together. Mm -hmm. Like even our company, there's a lot of like first name, last name photographers, you know, or first right. name, last name marketing people mm -hmm. or video, whatever you want to say. We wanted to build CNI and, and literally say this isn't about Josh Miller or it's not about anybody on our team. What happens when people come together is like magical. And so we took that, that's what we get to experience here on a daily basis. Um, and I think there's that really great quote that like, um, if you wanna go fast, go alone. But if you wanna go far, go together. And so I think that's what we experience here on a daily basis. So we thought if we could take a little bit of this and do stuff for our community even better. You know, we do a music festival here every year called For the Love for no reason. We don't make any money from it. We I just it. we just like music. Just open your doors. Yeah, just like we should have people play it. Like for no reason. Yeah. We're an advertising agency. Why are we doing that? Just because we, sh we think we should be doing stuff for the area that we're in um, and to the town, the city that's supportive of us, so. And I'm very happy being here, <laughs> okay. Speaking of, we were just, the train, I just heard it yes, came by. Yes, it did. Brightline train. It did. Which I'm very thankful for because yeah. I travel a lot between West Palm, Miami, yeah. and I think that's been a blessing. Uh, I was actually just at an event called Rise in Fort Lauderdale Neighborhood okay. in Biznow, Okay. and I thought it was, it, was, it, were, it was fascinating because it really put the perspective of what was happening in Fort Lauderdale on the table. There's a lot of people from out of state and from Palm Beach and Miami. Alan Hooper was on the panel. Love Hooper. Very passionate. Love Hooper. I love it. It was just like right love in Hooper. your face. You know, he's been a catalyst we, for development. We need more people like that guy. Yeah. Um, and his, ten, his, his team at Urban Street and what they're doing, I think, is really awesome. Um, and I think they keep pushing the boundaries of what should be. Um, and uh, so I, I really enjoy, I think, what Fort Lauderdale is becoming. And seeing stuff like the Bright Line pop up, like you said, is yeah. great. Like more stuff like that, yeah. I think, is where... Um, is what the town needs. So, so you're it's, happy with the direction of? Yeah, I think it's more. I think we're not pushing the boundaries enough. Okay. I think I think we're not going wild enough. To be quite honest, like you see all these apartment buildings pop up everywhere, but right. I'm like, there's not enough people to live in them, right. and there's not enough things for those people right. who live in them to, to do. do. Right. To keep so, them here. Right. So let's focus on yeah. some of that. I would love yeah. to see more stuff like that come in. More venues. Yeah. More galleries. More. More bars and, and restaurants yeah. and, and, right. and also uh, catalysts for people that are like doing really cool things. Yeah. And I think that's, and you can go wild with it, you know, but, and that's what we see in LA yeah. all the time because yeah. we see just the most ridiculous things over there. Uh, they had this really cool thing that I was just at because we were at a, we were at the Chamber event in LA and they were, every building that is built downtown is required to have an artistic element, a visual artistic element to that building. Really? Yeah, on okay. the facade. Like you can't okay. build a building unless you're going to do an art piece and stuff like that is like wow, they've like made a really a really good right. mandate, exactly. you know? So that means all your buildings aren't going to be stale and right. crusty and the same cookie cutter thing. Right. It's going to have this like wild side to it and that's yeah. like LA. So I think we could keep pushing the boundaries and doing yeah. more. And then I think you find that people want to live in those type of towns. Yeah. And I think you'll find that more in Flagler that as people do stuff, people don't want to live here because there's a, an apartment building. They want to live here because what that what's around that apartment building? Yeah. What's that? They got the bright line here. There's that cool yeah. coffee shop and exactly. blah blah blah. Yeah. And then I think um, and I think I like what you guys do at Compass because yeah. you guys are connecting those people in those areas. So yeah. I think that's pretty cool. And and that's what I I lived in the lofts right across right. and I loved it yeah. because it was just very creative and I could like live off of yeah. that vibe yeah. which I thought was really cool. 
what what do you see or what are you bringing that maybe that's coming soon yeah <laughs> um, think that what, we should be? what's next I think what's really cool we're working on right now is we uh, just worked on a really cool film that we shot here in Fort Lauderdale Florida and um, oh and there's the bright line speaking of the devil we shot this awesome film here in uh, Fort Lauderdale and in Brooklyn and in Manhattan um, and so we're actually releasing that film on Christmas Eve so I think that's one of the coolest things that we're doing right now so we're really pumped on that um, how, we, how can we watch it? It's like going to just yeah. showed a sneak peek of it. We did. Right we had we, yeah, we had a showing here. It was packed, uh, hundreds of people, amazing. standing ovation. It's a really powerful oh, film, so I'm really excited about it. Um, but it's going to be on Amazon on Christmas Eve, so if you, I think everyone in the world has Amazon. So of open, course, open that bad boy up and watch it. Awesome. So yeah, that's new for us, and then. Um, and then also just keep us in mind as we venture to New York. I think that'll be the next big yeah, step for us. Yeah, that'd be great because, I mean, yeah. now with everything going on, most of the clients I work with, they're in the Northeast. So yeah. I, I mean, the other There's day. There's something strange about Fort Lauderdale and New York. People from New York job. go to Fort Lauderdale, from for people from sure. Fort Lauderdale go, yeah, I don't know. So. And I, I think it's really, really great. I'm so excited about that. I love New yeah. York. And just, I was with a couple yesterday and they, they're just discovering it and being and seeing their eyes, they're like, oh wow, this is actually yeah. hip, young, there's some things yeah. to do. I'm like, yeah, you have no idea. Yeah, you real know? big old city. <laughs> so uh, we're really excited about that. So next year's looking good. So when you're not working and bringing the whole community together, sure, sure. tell me what a perfect weekend would be for you. Okay, this is gonna sound really bad, <laughs> but I'm gonna be straight up honest. <laughs> I love honest. <laughs> Perfect weekend to me is nobody's around. I'm inside of my house and I never leave. Okay. I've got my laptop. Okay. I'm watching episodes of Seinfeld. Seinfeld, all right. And that's it. it. Okay. The sun rises. I walk around, I go to the bathroom. I type some things. Back to the basics. I go to sleep. I don't see anybody. I don't do anything. I'm always doing stuff, so my dream is to not do anything. I doubt that's going to be the case with you. Yeah, that's true. I talk about it all the time. Like, I just wish I could go to a beach and hang out. But I'd be the type of person that would start something on yeah, that beach like, and then do no. something and then whatever. <laughs> so, that's well, me. I, thank you so much Absolutely. for spending the evening. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, thanks, always. thanks for having me. It's um, one of my favorite places. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited that you're doing this. I think it's going to be really cool. And yeah. so, thanks for having me. Stay tuned, everyone. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers.